Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 3G and 3S Class Assembly. In our English lesson, we've been reading the book Escape from Pompeii by Kristen Ballett. Escape from Pompeii links to our IPC topic, Active Planet, which is all about the changing nature of planet Earth. We have been learning about how these changes cause earthquakes and volcanoes and exploit how we as humans can protect others from natural disasters. So far ado, let's get started. Sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Young Trana listened to the humming noise from taverns and shops and the busy tradesmen haggling in the streets below. Could anyone feel safer than here? Is there anything more beautiful? Beyond the massive city walls, he could see Pompeii's greatest protector looming in the distance. They called it Vesuvius the Gentle Mountain. Sneak down to the harbour, the mouth of the river sand is high by sacks of grain. There he watched pots of wine, oil and spices being carried to and from the ships. Sometimes Trani went to the farm to watch her politicians make their speeches. The stallholders argued and listened to the poet sing. His favourite song was Rumble down, tumble down, great city wall. Feel the ground grumble, the citizens stumble. When the earth uh, shakes, rumble down, tumble down. Everybody started laughing as they remembered the earth's tremors. Rumble down, tumble down, great city walls. Feel the ground rumble, the citizens stumble. When the earth shakes, rumble down, tumble down. <laughs> A few years before Trani was born, there was a big earthquake in Pompeii, but people still didn't take him seriously.
Tanya would shout up to Olivia, the baker's daughter who lived across the street. Olivia spent most of her time learning to weave and cook, but during the hot afternoon, she and Tranio will go by the fountain and play knuckle bones or chase dogs down the street. One hot August day, Dion led Tranio through a city passage into one of Pompey's two theaters on the edge of the city where a pantomime was being rehearsed. The man's chapter is playing thieves and devils and leaping acrobats quite took his breath away, but eventually his attention began to wander. Then something happened. The stone steps creaked, the flap began to rattle, and the building quivered. Props fell on the stage and scenery split. Tranio's father first to spot everyone first saw him one by one down to spend around. He ran as fast as he could. People were shouting, arming, and carrying belongings. Olivia, Liv, where are you? The bakery kitchen was empty. Loaves lay scattered on the floor. The oven blazed, and the small donkeys turned in the corner, brayed and jumped nervously against its chain. Rush and excited, that two children hung in, hung into the dusty stone. But as they ran, the, dust, the sky began to darken and the thick clouds drifted slowly overhead. Why are the seagulls flying towards the woods? They're going the wrong way. A bird chirped frantically, trapped behind his bars as the air began to fill with ash. Bobbing down the choppy river as men began to untie the moorings and ropes. No one noticed two small children climb up a narrow plank of a small Greek cargo ship and hide beneath a pile of colored rugs. Dusty and tired in their hiding place, they soon fell asleep, but as they slept on an Atlas, Captain untied his boat. The wind is changing and it's getting very hot. I'm going to see the captain sensed that the winds had changed direction and that the air was uncomfortably hot. The sea began to churn and pull back from the shore. 
We're finally going to leave you a World Cup and looked up. They were horrifying. Pompeii was getting further and further away. The sky was now thick with pumice and black with ash. As she spoke, Livia started to choke. The children could hear dogs barking and people's muffled screams as they ran, gasping for air, with rags covering their months or pillows over their heads, sound falling to the grumbling, trumbling ground. Vesuvius roar its top exploding in scream. Massive cloud of silver ash rose to the heavens, twisting and bubbling in every direction until everything was in total darkness. Lightning flash and thunder roared. Streams of molten liquid went down fast rivers and down mountain slopes and covered the nearby town. The walls, streets, and gongs of their beloved Pompeii despaired beneath the blanket of ash and stones before their very eyes. Everything and everyone they ever had loved was destroyed. Desperately as the steaming lava reached itself while the boat was reaching out for safety. They left just in time. Soon the sea sank back from shore and even the fishing was dried up.
first its slopes were burnt and barren. In time, the volcanic soil brought forth its riches once more. Most people had forgotten the buried city. An old man and a woman stood in a shade and concrete and made the flower there. Long ago, they were rescued by a kind captain from a great cargo ship and raised by one of their own. They were suddenly leaving the same farewell to the ass beneath their feet. Would anybody find the, their beloved Pompeii? They wondered, would anybody see its splendid streets? Perhaps, perhaps not. Tranny and Olivia walked back to their small house beside the orange grove. For the rest of their days, they'll keep great sorrow within their hearts. This brings our story to an end. We hope you've enjoyed it and have gained an understanding into the impact of volcanic eruptions and how important it is that we work together to prepare for planet us unpredictable changes. We'd like to invite you to stand up and dance with us. All students, teachers and parents, please stand up. Close your eyes.